today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast, Jason and Katie. Uh, Tristan Thompson uh, signed with the LA Lakers for the playoff run. Big news. Uh, big news, which of course means that he's going to be spending the vast majority of his time, when not on the road, I guess, uh, playing for the Lakers in Los Angeles. Guess who else lives in Los Angeles? I have no idea. Oh, how about his ex, baby mama, Khloe Kardashian? First of all, let's, this anal- is it. let's analyze ex. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, we don't we don't really know the state of their relationship. We know that they were both at one of their kids' birthday parties recently. That's normal. Uh, and that's normal. Right. Um, that's co-parenting. That's right. In the wake of the multiple cheating scandals, Tristan, I mean, they haven't confirmed all of them, but l- l- we know what we know, right? Which is that he has been with a lot of other women Women when, when she thought that they were exclusive together. And you know what confirms it? Um, the babies that he's had with the other babies. women, <laughs> the actual physical babies, did confirm the infidelity. There's really but, no right. greater confirmation a, of, a, of sex than yeah, a baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, but look, the world is judgmental, and we and people are judging her for continuing to go back with him. So, and when we hear that he's coming back to LA, he's going to be a Laker. He's going to be in town most of the time. She's going to have access to him, and he to her. There's speculation that they're going to get back together again. And again, the world's a judgmental place. And so people are judging her for what she's done in the past, what they expect she'll do in the future. This doesn't bother me. If they get back together, it would not bother me. I i don't have a lot of judgment around this, honestly. And we've seen them recently. We've seen him rock up to a couple parties, right? Like her best friend's um, birthday party. We saw him kind of sneak in and out. So I was kind of like, mm, could they be back together? We just saw them recently at McDonald's going through the drive through No kids in the back, just them. I think that they're co-parenting and now I think they're crossing the line and honestly if she wants to do it let her do it she knows what she's getting into she's an adult well that's the question though does she really know what she's getting into I, 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 At this I do you point. think that she convinces herself and I do I have to tell you I think that she convinces herself this time will be different and yeah of course they can do whatever they want to do they're free people she can sleep with whoever she wants she can remarry Trist or I guess never marry she can marry Tristan if she wants to but Ultimately, at some point, don't you feel bad for her? I, you know what? I'm trying not to feel bad for her because I feel like, like I said, she's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. She's smart. We've seen Chloe before. She's a smart, smart sure. woman. And she, he obviously brings her some sort of like happiness, whether it be watching him father their children or whatever it is. He could be excellent in bed. My guess is probably considering all the women he's taken down. And so there's something there. Do you think there's a correlation there. between how, many sex an, how much sex an NBA player has and how good they are in the in Yeah, the of course. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. practice, right? Yeah, like yeah, the more yeah. free throws yeah. you make, <laughs> right. the better you're going to be. I think be. confirms he's rich and famous and very <laughs> handsome more than anything that else. Could, but, that could yeah, be. Okay. We don't know his talent level. Yeah. But I think... I think she knows what she's getting into. I think she has to set up very well, I you know, setting up very strict ground rules if she goes back with him. Like, you know, maybe they'll make an arrangement this time where everybody can live with it. I think the only ground rules for Tristan are probably no ground rules at all, right? That's 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 the ground rule that he's going to actually abide by. I mean, it seemed like last time she was very upset because he had a baby. Because you remember that when we saw it on on their show, that she was just like, why didn't he wrap it? Why didn't he do right. this? Because it was really the baby. Yeah. So maybe they'll make an arrangement. I'm not sure. Something so, something yeah. works for her with that relationship. So so you're being properly so non judgmental. Let me ask you a question. If If... We don't know Chloe and Tristan personally. We know of them, obviously. Let's right. say you had a friend, not not even a famous friend, just a friend, and her boy, her baby daddy, had put her through what Tristan has put Chloe through, which is clearly at least the first time she was unaware that he was with other people. She was devastated by it. She accepts him back. He then goes out when she's pregnant, knows she's pregnant, gets another woman pregnant during that time, and she is once again devastated. If you heard that your friend was – that her her baby daddy had moved back to town and her friend was, again, sort of at the very least ha- being around him a lot, would you be concerned for your friend? Oh, I mean, yeah, of course you're going to be concerned. I'm sure that's a position all the sisters are put and, in is and, he's coming to, like, family yeah. parties. It's hard not to want to punch and him in the face. And would you say to your group of friends without this woman present, well, look, I'm happy for her. She can do whatever she wants. I mean – No, you'd be judgmental. <laughs> you got me. You got me a little bit. It's hard, though. I mean, I just – you know, especially because you have to think with the sisters, too. They have to be nice to him because he's the, you know, the father of their – um, niece and nephew, sure. but 
It's hard to stand by. I mean, it would be hard to because you know it's going to happen yeah. again. Let's say this was Courtney. <laughs> well, if, it's, we if, with... it's, if it's Courtney, I'd be like, you do you. You're yeah, obviously fine right. with that. Have a, have a cocktail. And, right. Can you and, imagine if we tried to judge Courtney through I, her face? I she mean, would be all over I us. I mean, listen. Good God. Well, look, I, I mean, there seems to be, to, to your point about, it, Chloe's the most likable to me of all the sisters. Right. She's the most relatable. Yeah. She's the, the one that I think has struggled the most to find sort of true happiness. And she's got these two kids now who she clearly loves dearly. And it, it's sort of painful to watch her go through what she's gone through the last couple of times. And I think we're all fearful to the extent we care about their lives at all. And right. we obviously right. do. It's what we do for a living. I I, I, I I worry about her a little bit. To the extent I can worry about somebody I don't know, you do. I worry about her. It keeps you up at night. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, it does. <laughs> it does. I mean, me. and also maybe we don't know if anything's happening. We've only seen them together at the kids' parties and at McDonald's, right? Like maybe she is just such a phenomenal human being that she's gotten so hurt by this guy that she can keep mm -hmm. him in her life for the kids' sake so they have this really amazing relationship with her dad, in which case, I mean, hats off to Chloe. Yeah. We don't exactly know what's happening. It would be interesting to see her date somebody else. That's what we haven't seen, right? That's we what haven't I want seen her move see. on. She can have virtually any guy she wants, yeah. you know? But, it, but she has chosen, and she's a parent of two kids, She's busy, you know, she's her priorities have changed. She's not out of clubs all the time, the whole thing. So she may not have as readily access as she used to do, to finding other dates. But it would be interesting to see if she starts dating somebody else. And my guess is, and this is maybe an indictment of Tristan, my guess is he would like be jealous and care. Oh, yeah. Bit. I'm sure he would. Yeah. Especially if a new guy's spending time around his kids. Right. But that's probably what she should do. Right. My that, favorite new Laker is should... Jared Vanderbilt, and I'm, I'm rooting for Jared and oh. Tristan to, to meet. To... I mean, and, and Chloe to meet. Jer oh, so now she's dating one of his teammates. In my really in my mind, when I have relationship goals or something, it's Jared Vanderbilt and how, Khloe Kardashian. How do you think that LA is going to respond with Tristan playing on the court? Will he get? Because we've seen it where he got taunted a lot at games after the no, whole the, thing went down with yeah. Chloe. Is LA just going to harass him the entire no, time he's L on the court? LA, fan, this is the playoffs. If it was the regular season, I think he'd be in for it. But hey, I don't know how much playing time he's got. He's he's behind a number of people on the bench. I think he's there for size and for playoff experience. And, uh, and he I don't cheers know how much really well. And he cheers really well. He's <laughs> by all accounts a great teammate. And, and so I, I think that he will. I, I don't know how much playing time I get, but it's the playoffs, and Laker fans are going to get behind him and support him and not razz him. Unless he comes in and they're down by like 27, and then they're just going to absolutely just... <laughs> annihilate him. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> well, for sure. Oh, for sure. It's going gonna, gonna to be bad. Um, I mean, we saw, we've seen Lakers, you know, Lakers fan, fans of all cities adopt their players and sort of forgive their. Yeah. Their, we certainly have seen that, haven't we? We, we have seen that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So before we move on, let's take a note that this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Who doesn't love it when an opportunity arises? Right? What are you suggesting? <laughs> The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And they say there's nothing sexier than confidence. Well, Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code TMZ at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TMZ, to receive your first free month. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. So, Katie, the, the strangest story of 2023 so far, I have no idea what to make of this. I think... I would call this disturbing video Monday. Disturbing how... <laughs> video Monday. So the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan spiritual advisor, the Tibetan spiritual guru, um, has made an off-color, inappropriate remark to a young child. Yeah, using a physical comedy, I guess you'd call I, it. I guess it's so. So I guess what happens is the boy comes up to him. It's, it's sort of a, I, I don't know what you would call it in, in Dalai Lama circles, but some sort of a meet and greet where he's meeting lots of, lots he's of doing like agilence. He's doing like a religious conference, right? Little or something. Religious con conference. And this, this little boy, he's got, he's just maybe seven years old, eight years old, asks the Dalai Lama for a hug. I guess, again, this is a spiritual guru. So it'd be something for a little boy to, to get a hug from the Dalai Lama. 
Uh, in the video, the boy, he, so the boy kindly asks if he can hug the 87-year-old, but it quickly becomes this uncomfortable watch. The dolly follows up with a kiss of the boy on the lips, which is kind of weird in and of itself. But again, you're giving a little bit of benefit of the doubt. And then he sticks his tongue out and he asks the boy, would you like to suck my tongue? Yeah, it was... Oh, when I first read the story without yeah. seeing the video, I thought, oh, this is a this is a classic 2023 moment that the world is blowing out of proportion. And, uh, you know, he was probably just kidding around. Then when you watch the video, I was like, oh, dear. Oh, my. Oh, no. That was it was Again. because it was I feel like it was the whole build up that made me so uncomfortable, right? Because it's like 2023, we always teach kids now, you don't have to do anything physical with anything that makes you uncomfortable. And you could kind of see, like, I felt bad for this little boy, right? Yeah. So we asked for a hug. All he wanted was a hug. And then he got his hug. And then the Dalai Lama first asked, oh, kiss my cheek, kisses his cheek. Then he says, can you kiss my lips? And the little boy's standing there. Then he kisses his lips. And then the Dalai Lama sucks out, sticks out his tongue. And I felt like this little boy has no idea what to do. Everyone was kind of uncomfortable. They got a few I'm little, sure the little uncomfortable. Boy was terribly uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And I just think, you know, they're now saying, oh, it was a joke. He has apologized. But it was so, it was really inappropriate. And I think it's made everyone very uncomfortable, especially considering the past we've had with religious leaders. And yes. So so the, the statement from his office, and he's he's 87 to the extent it matters. It maybe adds a little color. He's 87. His office issued a statement saying the following, quote, to the boy and his family, as well as his many friends across the world for the hurt his words may have caused, he apologizes. The statement continues, the Dalai Lama teases people before he meets in an innocent and playful way, even in public and before cameras. I, I would make this point. Look, he's 87. This was a very, very public event. There's been no rumors that he has ever been in, in his all of his decades at, at serving as the Dalai Lama. Um, there's no suggestion that he's ever been inappropriate. I, I have to take it. I think it probably was a joke, just a really bad one. I don't think he was hitting on the boy. No, that, I think I think the only defense is that it was done in front of cameras. Right. right? So it's not like the secret hidden thing, which yeah. would obviously be way more disturbing. Yeah. So I think that is the only defense. But for me, that defense just like doesn't quite cut it yeah, yeah. He, he there was also an incident in 2019 and maybe this goes to just that he's inappropriate he's obviously getting much older he, he back in 2019 he talked about the possibility he was asked about the possibility of a female Dalai Lama succeeding him and his response was well she should be more attractive I guess than, than he is um, and I think that was a, meant to be a self-deprecating joke yeah um, but also like so tone deaf for the time. I think that's it. I think he's just very tone deaf, but then I you have to be cautious saying you have to be cautious giving it a pass, right? Yeah. With all of history yeah. that has presented itself in terms of like the Catholic Church and all of these things yeah. where we've seen really predatory behavior that's come from a lot of religious figures. And yeah. so I think that's probably the number one disturbing thing. It's hard to give him a pass. But again, like I said, the only defense would be that he's done it publicly. We don't know that he's how and, and that he's trying to like make a joke. My suggestion would be that he come off of leave the physical comedy to Carrot Top. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> like, let's get some bits. Right. Let's get some. Why right. did the Dalai Lama cross the road? Right. Figure out a, a, an answer for that. Right. This was very disturbing. Was that an invite to Carrot Top to do this kind of <laughs> no, thing? Okay. No. Carrot Top has, has delightful physical comedy that's right. very innocent. Also, this was, little known fact, a Tibetan guru himself. Uh, is, um, is yeah, he? You, people don't know that about him. Look um, at you with that fun <laughs> fact, Jason. You just know everything. Wow. Um, so, so I, I mean, the other defense is that he he was eighty four when he made the original comment about the about being more attractive. He's eighty seven now. He's got kind of that grandpa kind of thing happening. An older grandpa. Uh, we forgive grandpas a lot of stuff, different time kind of stuff. Not and, in twenty twenty three. We don't. The only defense, honestly, would be that he he's not a sound mind anymore which yeah. happens to a lot of people as right. they get older um but there's been no indications of that generally he hasn't come out and taken the mic on this he's just issued statements through his his people right um i don't know what to make of this i don't know what to make of it either i would say the only other defense you could say is right if he's just getting up there and it's kind of like grandpa humor right you always like stick out your tongue at a little kid you don't say suck it though yeah you ne don't never heard there's, that one I can't it's really hard for me to defend this one it's, it's really just, really hard. It, and had he just even if he had just said, 
like if it had been inappropriate where the little boy asked for a hug and he immediately was like stuck out his tongue and was like suck my tongue it could be a little funny it was the build up for me yeah. that threw me off it was like give me this on the cheek give me this on the mouth now do and it was like Oh, oh, yeah. oh, and and everyone that's watched the video has we, kind of reacted the same way. Are so, we canceling the Dalai Lama right now? Oh, goodness! I don't know if you can cancel the Dalai Lama. He's he's. The, I was reading about it before, and I'm not going to get this right, but I believe he's the 14th reincarnation of uh, a, 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 a Tibetan uh, guy whose name was very long, and I should know it. And I should have written it down, but I didn't. But he's the 14th reincarnation of that guy. Um, so. Once he passes on, there'll be a fifteenth reincarnation, and I guess every reincarnation of this guy can set his own path, and so therefore, hopefully, the next one will. Yeah, and also, I do think that you know the Dalai Lama has always been really popular with um, celebrities, with yes. and and I they will definitely be taking a step back. Oh, it's for a, sure. That's, any any person with any political power or celebrity, or uh, they will definitely. That's a have really to... interesting point because it, it, honestly, I want to pick up on that because the reason that celebrity have been celebrities have been so in in tune with the Dalai Lama is he is standing up to Chinese power. Tibet has been, uh, according to the West, unlawfully usurped by China. He's been in exile. The Dalai Lama has in India for forever. Even I think his predecessors, one or two of them, have been in exile in India. There's still a, a great celebrity outpouring of support for the position of the Dalai Lama, but you got to separate the man from the office, right? Yeah, yeah. and I think that'll take a hit for sure. I think it will too. It's sort of a sad story, honestly, because he is so important as a spiritual leader to so many people, it, not just Tibetans, but to, to free minded, free thinking people across right. the globe. Yeah. It's a bummer, but it's, also he needs to cool it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he does. He did. He needs, that's my advice to the Dalai Lama. <laughs> cool it. Cool it, dude. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.